name is Chin Chin. I'm and, Holly. Uh, and we started this company together with a few others. The company is very new. We have just passed our first anniversary. We started on the 18th of October 2013 actually. Yeah. It's about a year plus. Right. And uh, this very new company uh, is our uh, a new baby. Something that we believe very much in. Um, where forensic science is concerned. We have uh, something that we believe strongly. And that's rethinking our beliefs and reshaping forensic science. We actually graduated from uh, NUS Chemistry and um, forensic science is actually our first job. Um, when did you graduate? I can't remember <laughs> what it was like in the year 1999. So each of us have more than um, 15 years of experience, the two of us, um, in forensic science before we started this new company. So although the company is new, we are not new in this field. <laughs> Yeah, I actually graduated in uh, 1991. I went on to do my master's in NUS and then eventually I took on my first job as a forensic scientist. So I remained a forensic scientist from the year I joined, which was in 1994 until now. So you can see how ancient I am. Accuracy has become much better compared to many, many years ago. So identification now, to a certain extent, is easier. So if the instrument, a few instruments actually help you to identify a compound, then yes, the identity of the compound is X or Y. Okay? But there are sometimes, there are cases whereby it's not just about identification, because where forensic science is concerned, yeah, it's important to identify something, what was present. But there's another part to it, the association. Because knowing what is present, yeah, no doubt that is important, but we want to link it to whoever is involved or to what event is involved. As scientists, we do not look at motives. Okay? That's the job of the investigator and of the court. We look at the evidence that is there for us and we try to see, based on the science we have, whether there's evidence to actually lead us to link it up together and form a story as to what are the possible events that could have occurred. What happened between the victim and the perpetrator? What was happening at the scene itself? Again, if you identify something and you don't understand the significance of it, if we say that, oh, we found fibers, but in actual fact, those are, let's say, quite cotton fibers. Quite cotton sure. fibers are everywhere, yeah. you know? I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> so the significance is very low. And I think it's the duty of a forensic scientist to be in court to explain not just what I found, but why is it there? What is the significance of seeing this evidence that is there? And of course, of course, as scientists, we must understand limitations. Yes. As much as science has advanced, there are still limitations. Limitations in the way we do things, limitations even in the hypothesis itself. And we have to explain it in our report and explain this very clearly to the court. So we really hope to um, apply chemistry to serve the society, in other words. Yeah, that um, society at large, not just in the area of crime, because a lot of people associate forensic science to purely crime, or in fact just murder cases. But how many murder cases do you really see in Singapore? There are not just murder cases, but there are a lot of different kinds of crimes. And uh, the forensic experts group hope to apply forensic science methodology, the mindset, to solve other problems, because it's about problem solving, identifying problems, and how do you go about finding solutions to address those problems. So it can be used also for industrial applications, that uh, in the industry when they have an issue, again they are trying to investigate, right? And when you need to investigate, you can apply the forensic mindset, or even insurance companies, banks, and so on. Actually, it's easier to talk about what we do in a year, or even in a month, because every day is quite different. Yeah, yeah because it, okay, right now, if we talk about typical day of a forensic scientist, that means my last 20 years may be quite different from the last one year or so. So depending on you know which period you are in your career, I would say as a forensic scientist, I think the difficulty is slightly different. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are a junior scientist, then of course I think the emphasis will be more on casework, training. Be, yeah, training. You 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 be trained first initial part. So the first one year or so is intensive training. It's a lot of training. And during your training, you may help out with certain duties. So it's still training after training. You're, you're learning a lot of new knowledge. 
because you need a lot of living knowledge and specialized knowledge mm. and also certain ways of looking at things that forensic approach of the mindset. So then after that, you know, when you are competent or proven to be competent to do a certain area of work, then you'll be more work being assigned to you, a case being assigned to you, you work alongside a senior scientist, so you're looking at cases. And of course, besides, it's not just, scientist work is not just everyday goes to crime scene, everyday you look at cases, no, not it's, like not, what you see yeah, it's not that way, you know. You still have to do some administrative duties. Quality assurance. It's, yeah, quality assurance is a very big thing actually in forensic science. Actually, in a lot of scientific areas it is. Of course, in a TV program, you don't see quality assurance because that is too boring. Yeah. <laughs> so quality assurance takes out a big part, actually. So you do quality, you do case work, you are involved in meetings to improve things. Yeah, you are also involved in training people or receiving trainings, things like that. Yeah. So that's, it's no typical day in that sense. Yeah. Because, uh, and besides that, our work in this um, forensic experts group, or before that, uh, basically very non-routine work. Um, the samples that come in can be very uh, varied, very wide variety, and they come in different forms, different matrices, and there's no standard way sometimes uh, to analyze them. That's a methodology, yes, but we will have to, based on the context of the case, tweak the methods and so on. So it's not routine in that sense. Well, definitely in NUS, we learn the fundamentals of science and all that theory, which is very important. Because when I have to run an instrument, I need to know how it works, what are the limitations, right? So that part is important. But beyond that, I guess it's also the, um, the rigor, when it, especially when you go through the Omnisphere project. There's a lot of... Um, that's when you start to do experiments, you start to do problem solving and things like that. So that is very crucial also. And uh, yeah, and working with your team uh, when it comes to um, doing projects or so. Yeah, so it's learning to work with people, so you don't really do things on your own. But I would encourage actually um, students not just to focus on just academic studies alone, but if they have the time to start to contribute to society already. You know, you don't, you can't wait till after I've graduated and say that when I have more time. Then I start doing things like that. But it starts early and how you manage your time. Because when you start working, you really will get very, very busy. And that's when your habits have to be formed earlier. Your character has to be formed right at the beginning. How you manage your time, how you manage yourself. That has to be formed during your uh, study years. Yeah. And that will be tested when you go into working. It's not like when you go there, then you start to acquire. It's a bit too late, I would say. Okay, but like what Pauline mentioned earlier, I want to stress the part on teamwork. In any case, we always do it as a team. Team in the sense that different people, different members within the team have different strengths. We have our different expertise. And we need that collation, that entire collaboration between different politics and police to actually make a case work. So each time, we're helping each other. And at the scene, when you gather evidence, you can do it alone. You know, you always have a group of people. Some people will be doing the documentation. Some people will be doing the sketching. Some people will be analyzing the case. Some people will be looking at evidence. And at the lab, the same thing happens. And of course, at the end, sometimes different experts will come up to make reports, but we try to keep and link all the findings together. Because it makes no sense, you know, if you were to go to court, and then everybody just talk on their own, and there's nobody to link it up. Yeah. So that brings us to... That another very important aspect that as a scientist we need to acquire is good language skills, be able to communicate clearly to laymen. The scientists can sometimes be very, um, very irritating people, <laughs> right? We have a certain style of doing things and we want to do things in a certain way and we only want to use certain jargons to explain our facts. But what, what's the point if the court, the lay people, the family members who want to answer cannot understand what we're saying? So we have to be able to communicate well. We have been asked this question <laughs> um, quite often actually. There are people who are very keen to do forensic science and they ask whether they should do a major in forensic science. And you don't have that in Singapore, so they were asking whether they should invest one year or so 
and then go overseas to do a forensic science master's, or they should just uh, forget about the university in uh, Singapore and then go overseas to just do a degree, a higher degree, focusing on forensic science. And our answer has always been the same all these years. <laughs> okay, is that you shouldn't focus or zoom in so early. In, I mean, you are young, you know that education that you have, that science education that you have, should be a more general one. You see the different aspects of science. You know, once you become more specialised, you just zoom in on a particular area. Then it may not be such a good thing. It's just like a frog in a well, to a certain extent. You know, not that we are saying that you cannot zoom in, but it really depends on the area. Okay, like forensic science, just now based on what we have said. It's looking at a lot of different areas. It's not just one area. We talk about glass, you know, but any evidence can become anything actually, any material at the scene can become evidence. You can have glass, okay, you can have plastic that broke, you can have uh, some liquid, you can have um, metal, you can have houses, practically any material actually. So are we going to say that, you know, I just do material science? Is material science the answer? No, because you can have synthesis, because certain drugs will involve certain synthesis factors. So you need to know about synthesis as well. You know? So I am going to say, oh, just inorganic then. But there are organic materials. Okay? So in a nutshell, I think the education system that we have, where science is concerned, where chemistry is concerned, I think it's good enough. Because it looks at all the different types of science. Mm -hmm. Yes, analytical chemistry is good, it's important because we use a lot of analytical mm -hmm. instruments. But of course, you will have an upper age because you don't want to use that instrument. But does that mean that you just focus on that and nothing else? Organic chem is not important, inorganic chem is not important, or physical chem is not important? It's not so. Because there are experiments that we do that require that physical chemistry that comes into play, or the inorganic chemistry, or the organic chemistry comes in. So, that was why I, the education that I received in NUS, I like it because I had all four types of science and I knew what they were about. Of course, I don't use everything that I learned, but those were the foundation years. Those were things that I learned from my lecturers, which I think has helped me greatly today. Mm -hmm. And that question about um, whether a master's or a PhD or just a bachelor. No, I think it's, it's good in the sense that when a person does master's or postgrad, Masters or PhD. The skill set you have is that research skill set. In the sense that you have the opportunity to actually be independent, to actually acquire, look, look up for literature, and then plan your experiments, and then do your research. And that experience is good experience. But it does not mean that you know, all forensic scientists must have that experience. It doesn't mean that. But I think the question is not like, do I, should I do a master's or PhD in order to have a greater, a better career prospect in that sense. But the question should start from, why do I want to do a master's? What sort of skills do I want to acquire when I do this master's that I cannot get from elsewhere that I really like? Or do I really like that? Maybe it's simply because I really like that project very much. And it stems from there. So when you are doing that project and it stems from your passion, you acquire beyond just the master's degree to greater things, you know what I mean? You actually learn more things when you have the right attitude. Yeah, because I'm doing it because I love it. Because I'm doing it because I want to learn about research. Then you, you learn more on that. But if my starting point was so that I can get a certificate in order to get into forensic science and a greater career prospect, you will lose out on your learning process. You miss out some things. So I think we should change the way the questions go. Why do I do it? Yeah, it still boils down to attitude. You know, when you do something, what was your attitude when the thing is concerned? And passion is a very important thing. Forensic science work can be very, very tough and challenging at times. Like mentally, physically, and emotionally sometimes. You know, so if you don't have a right attitude and you know why you decided to become a forensic scientist, then you really have to rethink. Sometimes we fail to answer or ask ourselves even the fundamental question. Why are we studying? You know, I mean, we have been asked to study since we were young. But why are we studying and what are we studying? What is it that we are acquiring that we need? Is it just about getting a job? And what kind of job? Is it just about the money? 
I mean, if you really drill deep down, is really money the satisfying factor? And a lot of us know that that is not the case. You know, to have a very fulfilling life, what is it that you need? What is it that will satisfy you? The money is important, but it's not the only thing. You know, what is it that you really believe in? And I guess a lot of times, I speak with my own, uh, my own opinion. I think it's important that with whatever skills that I have, I do something that is helpful, is impactful, where other people are concerned, as it, it helps them. And the job that I'm doing now allows me to do that.